episode 39. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Into the 99. Because <laughs> we have 99 cards. Because Commander's number one. And I'm one of your own German. I'm Hope. I'm Daniel. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brian. Hey, it's been a while since we've all gotten back together. We're a little, well, I'm a little crazy. I don't know about you guys. It's uh, definitely nice to be back yeah. and not on webcams. The, the well, live shows were fun, but we definitely like to be in our little studio Yeah, setting. well, it's nice to be not on webcam, but also exactly all four of us, because it's been just three of us for the last couple of weeks. And it's just yeah, been, exactly. It sucked, if I can be honest. I miss you guys a it's, lot. It's been yeah. hard. It was, like, yeah. emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that we had to stay away from... From Daniel. from Daniel. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, I was sick minorly i couldn't talk for minorly a while yeah at all i was bleeding from my throat it was not as minor as i'm making it out to be yeah but i was majorly sick and i am no longer so he thank said, goodness yes thank god yeah so still staying away from yeah me, everyone's yeah. everyone's socially distant from me i'm in a bubble yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have covered him in saran wrap and just poked holes in his mouth and notes we've invested that heavily in purell that doesn't, doesn't sound good that doesn't sound good Depends who you ask. Oh. <laughs> jacket. Anyways, today we're going to continue on with our partners. This is the last one of the ones we're going to do. We, we've talked about it among ourselves, and we just aren't as interested in the very last pair. We're, nah. we're going to do Hald and Paco today. They're exciting. We love them. They, uh, it's one of the first decks I built out of the new C20 commanders because I was just was instantly interested in these commanders because they just do everything fun. I thought they were a great competitive commander. And that's what we're going to talk about today is an intro into competitive Mm -hmm. with a budget version and then kind of talk a little bit about my version, which is not a budget version. It's a fully upgraded CD. I'm shocked. Well, I I love how your budget here is like, but we'll get to that in a bit. The the budget version's not too bad. No, it's not. The the budget I made it for is 200 bucks. That's a. Pretty reasonable one. But for we, CEDH, it's very reasonable. That's really, for really an reasonable. EDH deck, that's quite but reasonable. But we talked about just the the final partners. The I think it's Yannick and and we just none of us were really interested enough. It would have been a forced episode. Yes, I have them in my deck. And yeah. yeah, and yeah. we just we just don't want to bring that kind of stuff to you guys. Like we want to bring content that we are actually excited about. about. Yeah. yeah. So the other partners we have been excited about. There's so many ways to build them. We've really, really enjoyed everyone's Far feedback. Some people with one. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, you just murdered people with yours. Yeah, the Trin and Silvar deck people Same. have liked a lot. Like the just we we liked all of the other ones. We liked Braylon Shabat Shabraz. We liked Ukima and Kazar. We just don't feel about about the other ones. So I have one question for you. You said this is an intro. The deck list that we're going to go over today is an intro to CDH. Yeah, just for so what? Where where would you tier it? Is it a tier seven, like an intro, like that intro, or would you actually rank rank it a little bit higher? Uh, yeah, I would point. say I would say probably a seven or an eight with the competitive. Mine is realistically a little bit higher, but we'll go into why after. But this budget version. It does have instant speed win condition, and it will sneak wins past your opponent. Mm-hmm. It's not very... It, it, you, you're not really showcasing what you're going to play, and you're in three colors, so... That's it's, very true. Yeah, like, you're, you're in three colors, you have a backup win condition, which we'll talk about. It's a pretty straightforward backup win <laughs> condition. Very un, unlike CEDH. Yeah, that's so. why it works pretty well for the backup win condition. But uh, to really get into this, um, we should probably talk about yeah, what we'll talk Halden about... and Parco are. <laughs> so let's talk ha- Let's talk Halden first. Yeah, so Halden, Avid Arcanist. Two and a blue for a legendary creature, Human Wizard. Partner with Paco, a drawer. Um, he, you may play non-creature cards from exile with fetch counters on them if you exiled them. And you may spend mana as a, or mana of any color to cast those spells. He's a 1-4. So number one about it, if Halden or Paco are removed from the battlefield... That doesn't change what ones were exiled. It's not a, it doesn't care about the instance. As long as you're the one who exiled them and put the fetch counters on them, you can indefinitely play these cards anytime you can play them for any color mana. So the whole reason to build this deck with like the CDH thing in mind is you're gonna get a chance to play a lot of cards you might not want to invest in yet. Mm-hmm. If you if you hit off the top of someone's deck with the Paco's ability, which we'll talk about in a minute. 
you can play my Mana Crypt. You can play my Demonic Consultation. You can play all my combo cards. Well, you can play cards that are not only expensive, but also like difficult to come by. Yep. You might also, like just off the top of my deck, you might get my Worldly Tutor or my... Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're able to get a lot of cards that you don't have the color for and removal you don't have the color for, instant speed, and you just stack a big pile of answers. And the better the CEDH group you're playing with, the better your deck yeah. becomes. Yeah, yeah. That's, and let's just keep in mind that you can take someone's win con. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Not only can you take their win con, but Halden lets you play any non creatures, uh, non creature cards exiled, so you can play your opponent's lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is crazy. crazy. So you can be sitting there playing other people's dual lands, their fetch lands. Like you have a lot of potential to and that's, wreck what they're doing. Well, that's one of the reasons that this lends so well to a budget is because. You don't have to have those super expensive lands. You don't have to have yeah, all you of these. Yeah, steal everyone else's. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you get like, all the value without dishing out your wallet. What I like about your take on this, just the fact that, like, in a, a more casual um, play, play style, okay, Howden and Paco, still decent, still pretty powerful, but yeah. CEDH is even crazier because the, the, uh, the CMC for every single spell is so much lower. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm attacking with Paco, I'm not worried about having someone's, uh, like, harvest seed or, like, something that's, like, high CMC. Yeah. Because you see that a, a fair amount in casual. You're going to see, like, yeah, five, the big six spells, seven. yeah. yeah. But in the C ultimatums, whatever. Yeah, but in, in CEDH, everyone's going to be running tutors, so you can steal their tutors. Yeah. A Mystic Remora, heck. You well, know? you're also, exactly, you're going to be hitting their Ristic Studies, just any of their... Can I just say how we're hitting them quickly? Well, well, one second. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, oh, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. with Halden, though, like the that's the whole point of the deck is that you don't need to have that wild investment and stuff. In games that you're playing him, you're going to be able to cast Force of Wills without buying one. You're going to be yeah. able to do a lot of the I can sudden spoiling without having black in the deck. You're going to hit a lot of really, really cool cards and learn the play style for CDH you like the most. This is why it's such a nice introduction. It has multiple like win con paths, but it also is just going to ramp and perform well. It's green. Green is easy to get mana out. And your commanders are kind of... They, they run and function with this whole deck. Paco is your... Paco just hits like a truck. Let's. There's no way around it. We were playing in uh, a game of actual CEDH. I hit everyone at the table on turn two. I hit everything, so everyone got a non-land or non-creature off the top. I know we'll talk about his ability in a moment. Don't worry, just settle down. For me. <laughs> well, uh, I hit everything off it, and turn two was able to swing for seven with Paco. He hits like a monster. Hope, please tell us what Paco does. I would love to. So Paco, arcane retriever. He's three and grew also red and green, uh, for an elemental hound or. And he partners with Halden, also Jadoy, and he has haste. Um, his, he's a base 3-3, three, three, and whenever he attacks, exile the top card of each player's library and put a fetch counter on it, hence the fetch counters that Halden uses, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on Paco for each non-creature card exiled this way. So, really, in your deck, you're almost you're guaranteed, essentially, a 1-1. One, one. Well, yeah, so this deck, we only run two creatures, and we'll talk about why those two creatures later on, mm -hmm. but... This basically means, that for, for us at least, every time Paco attacks, we've drawn a card. Yeah. So, so he's, which is pretty he's cool. definitely a solid card that way. We have a few different things in the deck, but there's a few themes. One is we want extra combats with Paco. Yeah. One is we want things that are going to untap our lands, because again, we want to play our opponent's spells. Yeah. They're going to have a bunch of instants, and, like instant sorceries, things to fetch, and we need the mana to actually play those. Well... Sorry, I was going to say untapping your lands, but also um, playing more than one land. Yes, and that's the the other one is playing the other lands. So the main combo that we're going to get to is we're going to discuss it right off the bat with the creatures. This deck is going to win out of the blue with a few different cards using the only two creatures in the deck, which is Leveler, a five cost 10-10 creature. When it comes into play, you remove your library from the game, and Thassa's Oracle. And for anyone who doesn't understand or know what Thassa's Oracle it is, it is a main CEDH combo piece right now, which functions by having your library removed or drawn in some fashion. Uh -huh. And Thassa's Oracle reads, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion to blue. 
Put one of them on top and the rest on the bottom in any order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So even if somebody kills Thassa's Oracle and your devotion to blue is zero, when the ability resolves, if you have zero cards in your library, you will still win. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, a very, it's a very quick, it comes out of nowhere. It's non-interactable because the ability stays on the stack and it's just... Yeah. So we're going to talk about the few things quickly that pull those out. You can raw cast them because you are in green. You have so much mana in green <laughs> all the time. Worst case scenario, it's a seven mana raw cast. It's not the hardest thing to do. No. No. Especially when you only need two blue and the rest is colorless. Yes. It's yeah. easy to... However, we're going to try cheat them out with a few cards in the deck. The Fun. First, the first one is Defense of the Heart. It's an enchantment for three and a green. During your upkeep, if one of your opponents controls three or more creatures, sack Defense of the Heart and search for up to two creatures, put them into play, shuffle your library after. I love this card. If this is not responded to, if it isn't responded to and it starts to resolve, you will win the game. Yeah. Yeah, because that's all you bring out. Yep. Somebody will need to have like a stifle to get rid of the triggered ability. Mm -hmm. And again, you're going to be in the deck running all of their combo pieces and their... All of their counter spells that you're hitting this off the top. Mean. So that's one of the ones. And all of the cards that we're going to talk about right now for this initial version of it function in that same way. We want to be able to, in one shot, get our creatures out. Yeah. Mass Polymorph is the next one. It's exile all creatures you control. We control Halden and Paco. It's two. Uh, you reveal cards from the top of your library and you reveal that many creatures. Put all of them revealed this way and then shuffle the rest of the revealed cards into your library. Yeah. So you get rid of two, you only have two, you yeah. land on your combo pieces. Yep, yeah, that one is a sorcery speed, so it's a little bit slower. It's six mana, and it's not the worst, but the one that we like to win is out of the blue, and it's going to be Divergent Transformations. It's an instant speed one. Its raw mana cost is six and a red, which is really, really high for a competitive game. Yes. But it has Undaunted. The spell costs one less for each opponent, so it's really only a four cost spell. Uh, it's exile two target creatures for each of them. Its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card, puts it into play, and shuffles the rest into the library. So an instant speed, four mana win con if you have your commanders out. Yeah. Oh, man. Wouldn't it be three? Lowest is three, but then the highest is potentially five. For what? Oh, for the uh, divergent transformation cost, which is true. Yeah. One less for each opponent. Yeah. So four, or, oh, three opponents, never mind. Yep. Yeah. Three opponents, uh, four players four, in the game. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, so. <laughs> so, so yourself, play, put a mirror in front of you. You're an opponent. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you, but you're so good looking. But I hate you. Technically, if you're playing a bigger game, it could be a one mana instant. Yeah. Oof. But yeah, so we're we're talking kind of just the, we'll, we'll talk about my list a little bit first and everything. So a, a lot of the things are going to, We're going to go through the instants and sorceries now. So mine runs 23 instants and then potentially another 60 because I'm running everyone else's instants when I'm hitting a (laughs) pocket. True. Such a great way to look at it. Yeah. So So me. So basically my deck tries to run 400 cards. (laughs) But uh, uh, Sherman, we'll just start going through them and stuff. So you can can start the instants off here. Yay. Okay. Anticipate one of my favorite ones Mm -hmm. ever. One in a blue instant. God, we're looking at this though. I don't know why I said that. Uh, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Which is dope. I love it. In this deck, even doper though, because you have Paco out most of the time. If you anticipate, all you're doing is drawing a card and deciding what you're going to hit off the top of your deck. Yeah. So you have a bit of a chance to protect your win condition by seeing what things are. And then putting something back on top that you want. You want to land back on top, then we're going to take that land when we swing a Paco. No, you're not. You're putting, putting it on the bottom. bottom. Oh, rest you of the bottom. You idiot! I'm thinking a different <laughs> card. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's all good. It's still good, though. You're still digging forward. I was thinking the wrong card. Sorry, sorry, you sorry. You fool! Fool! <laughs> reading's hard. It's early in the morning. Yeah, well, <laughs> reading's hard for you at any time of day. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this like your afternoon? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next we have is Chaos Warp because every deck that can run Chaos Warp should run Chaos Warp. It is a great card yeah. and a great answer because it's not destroy. It's going to get around indestructible. It's pretty solid as an answer. Yeah. And then you have Counterspell, Blue Blue, Counterspell. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. 
Next one though is awesome. Crop rotation for one green um, or single green. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a land. But you get to search your library for a land card, put in that card in the battlefield, then shuffle your library. I, uh, I initially had this in here for Rogue's Passage. And it should go back in for Rogue's Passage. I had just taken Rogue's Passage out to speed the deck up a little bit. But just a quick side note, Rogue's Passage should be in this deck, generally speaking. Yeah. Rogue's Passage just makes creatures unblockable. And, or four mana. And Paco. Halden is a truck. So, ha- pa- Paco. Paco. Paco, sorry. How do you oh, not know your driver. own Again, dog's name? Again, I'm tired name? today. How do you not know your dog's name? You have like two coffees, two energy drinks in front of you. That should tell you how I feel today. <laughs> but it's your own dog. It is my own dog. Look at my entire dog. The next we have <laughs> delay. It so fast. The next we have delay, counter target spell. Sorry, Sherman's Whew. coughing there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next, we have Delay. Delay counters target spell and puts it outside of the game with uh, time counters on it and removes them. And uh, oh, it suspends them, yeah. yeah. So it it's generally a pretty good one. It's a one colorless, one blue instant. It's pretty good. It staves off it, but it doesn't actually counter it fully. All it's doing is buying you time. So That's okay. Yeah. They, they do still get to cast it later. Yeah, but it's still cast, yes? Yep. So if you can get a turn later. later. Divergent Transformation, we obviously talked about. Uh, Expel from Arazka is another interesting one. It's one in a colorless. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you have the city's blessing, you can put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. And, and you hit it with Paco. Yes. Exactly. So. Paco is your dog, not Halden. He is your dog. Hey, 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 hey. A lot of things in this list put things back on top of a library or show you what's there so you know when you're going to hit things the best. Yeah. Uh, we run Fierce Guardianship because... Of course. Obviously. Because it's, it's just so such good. a good card. Yeah. It's, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, if you control your commander, uh, cast it for free, counter target, non-creature spell. And if you don't, it's two in the blue. Yeah. Yep. But Solid in this deck, overall. chances are you're going to be controlling your commander. One of, at least one at any given time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Force of Vigor, if it's not your turn, you can exile a green card from your hand rather than pay its mana cost. Uh, and the nice thing about that is you can still do that from the fetch pile. You can still exile the card from your hand to pay its mana cost. Destroy up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. So, again, another solid card. Growth Spiral. Draw a card. Put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. I love that card. It's yep. so good. Especially for Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So pretty. Oh, my God. Um, for some reason in my list, uh, this is not in English, but it's Hinder. Uh, for, <laughs> cause I was looking at it yeah. like what? You're like, cool. uh, it counters target spell, but you can put it on the top or bottom of its owner's library instead. Which Obviously, again, if you like it, yeah, exactly. I want something. It will, it's it It's like if it's worth countering, you probably yep. want it. Uh, keep safe. Counter target spell that targets a permanent you control, and you draw a card for two. That's awesome. Cross and grip because oh, you got, sometimes you got to cross and grip some things. It's yeah. not common. Which yeah. one? Well, keep safe. Yeah. 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 Oof. From Akoria, great, great set. We might have to find that. Uh, memory Lapse, counter target spell. If it's countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of the graveyard. Uh-huh. And then Paco. Yep. So yeah. the same thing. A lot of decks... And Bork. A lot of yeah. decks run things that are pretty good. Lots of Storm decks rely on an Aether Flux Reservoir. And if you take that Aether Flux from them, that is brutal. Fetch Boy. Hilarious. Yes, exactly. It's... That's oh the boy. worst. The worst part about this deck is saying Paco fetch when you swing because it just starts making people so mad. <laughs> Paco fetch. Uh, we have Narset's reversal, blue blue. Copy target instant or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand. You may choose new targets with a copy. Okay. So good. Overall, just a great, great CDH card for for people who don't know. Basically, you want counter and control in CDH because everyone's trying to combo off and win. You want a good combination of speed to win but you also want to be able to protect yourself from someone else winning that way the budget version of this deck a lot of the expensive cards have been removed more generic counter spells have been added but it has more control and still pretty safe in general it's just not as fast Mm -hmm. getting paco you're not going to get paco out turn two well for comparison's sake it has 29 instants versus your 23 yep um we run neutralize because cycling and counter target spell love Yep, yeah, it's a, just a strict upgrade of cancel. Uh, Savage Beating, which is what you give everyone with Paco. Yeah. Uh, three and a red red. Play only during combat. 
Uh, on your turn during combat, choose one. Creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. Or untap all creatures you control, and after this phase, there's another combat phase. Oh, so and you can entwine it. And it has entwine, yes. Oof. For an additional two. Seed Time is a card I do not see very often in competitive play, but it should. Uh, you can play Seed Time only during your turn. It's one and a green instant. Take an extra turn after this one if an opponent played a blue spell this turn. And in CEDH? That. Yep. I just love the fact that it's a green card that gives you an extra turn. Yeah. This, All is, right, just me. Yeah. this is one of my favorite cards to put under Isochron Scepter. If you can get this out early, it you're severely punished for trying to counter my spells because I'll just take an extra turn and hit you with my truck named Paco. <laughs> uh, we have Shredded Sails. Just uh, choose one, destroy target artifact, four damage, target creature with flying, or again, cycling. So... Generally, I actually am using it for cycling, but I do like to have more artifact destruction if possible. Mm-hmm. And or get rid of a pesky flyer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, trick mine. Well, they well are that, pesky, that one's going to blow Zer out of the air, which is nice. Yeah. And Zer's sometimes a problem. Sure. Always. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trick bind, a great, great card. It's one and a blue with split second. Uh, counter target activated or triggered ability. If a uh, permanent's ability is countered this way, activated abilities of that permanent can't be played again this turn. This is really, really good to hit with people who are trying to win with that Thassa's Oracle because that's a triggered ability. You counter it, they have no library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Temple Bellum. Yes. Yes. Please draw them. Uh, we, we run Veil of Summer. Uh, it's an M20 uncommon. It's but also gorgeous. It's just such a good card. Draw a card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered this turn. You and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and black until the end of the turn. Holy smoke. I didn't see the price on this until now. Yep. I did not know A this. A very, very expensive uncommon. Yes. Holy smoke. Yeah, it sits at $7 for an U.S. uncommon. Uh, will to destroy target artifact and enchantment or cycling again if you need to draw later on. Yeah. Uh, and then wipe away. We return target permanent to its owner's hand at split nice. second for one blue blue. Love that. Mm-hmm. We run kind of the generic green ramp package yeah ramp package because again we want we're trying to play things from each, like everyone else's deck we need mana to do so so we have cultivate a, a lot of our ramps just not worth countering people aren't going to blow a force of will on my cultivate no right so it, it's pretty safe ramp overall uh cultivate search for two lands everyone understands what that one does days undoing is just uh kind of a graveyard hate one but if you if you lose something important you can get them back uh, each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven cards. If it's your turn, end the turn. Yeah, ending the turn is also nice sometimes. Uh, we run Farseek to them. fix mana if we need. Yeah. Hunting Wilds to go for two forests because it's going to fetch our Tropical Island or any of those things that we need. Uh, it's going to fetch the new Triomes, which are pretty solid because they count as forests as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, for four mana, you go get two. We're on Mass Polymorph, obviously, which is a wind con in the deck. Migration Path, search for two basic lands. One uh, tapped, one to your head. Wow, ramp and growth. Oh, no, puts both on tap, sorry. You have so much ramp. A ton of ramp, because you need it. And then I'm, and then I'm just, like, glancing over the artifacts, and it's all, like, basically more ramp. More ramp. Yeah. Ramp, 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 ramp. Well, you gotta, ramp, you gotta ramp, remember, ramp you're trying to blood. play... Their stuff, yeah. Not only your deck, but four decks, right? Yeah. So, and... All the mana helps. I'm gonna be honest... It's going to hurt when someone plays three soul rings in a game. <laughs> it doesn't oh. feel good. Oh, oh. Yeah. When they take your win cons like that, they take your staff of domination and any of those infinite mana sinks, that you're, it's feels pretty bad. Yeah, that's so awesome. So we also have another annoying kind of backup win con. It's in the artifacts, but you'll understand why I have so much mana after. But yeah, we run Migration Path, Ramp of Growth, Ranger's Path, search for up to two Forest cards again, which fetches our duels, Sky Shroud Claim, same thing, Template Discovery, which no one should ever take the deal. Yes. I always do. And everyone yep. takes the deal. It's so tempting. What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, we run Vandal Blast because there is no better artifact destruction spell. Yeah. Uh, it's Destroy Target or you can overload it to destroy each. Yeah, artifact. Opponent's Control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And World at War is the last one! I've so, never heard of this card. World at War! Three in red, red, sorcery speed. After the first post-combat main phase, this turn, there's an additional combat 
phase followed by additional main phase. So basically, it's like attack, then main phase, attack again, and then you have another main phase. Oof. And it has but, rebound. Yeah. Oh, and, and followed by the, uh, at the beginning of this combat, untap all creatures that attack this turn as well. And then, yes, rebound. So you cast it again for free. Four combats so for the low, low price of one. Yeah. Yay. So, but that's, those are the sorceries. Sounds like I need to have that. Oh yes. yeah! No. Hell yeah! No, I don't want to play absolutely. against that. You absolutely need it. It is a really, really solid one. Um, our artifacts basically, if you run any deck that has a commander who's swinging, you should run Black Blade Reforged. It's one of the by far strongest artifacts in the game for commander creatures. Yeah, yeah especially for yeah, because it's legendary when equip cost is three, if, and anything else is seven, but. It gets plus one, plus one for each land you control, and your your ramp package is enormous. Well, and yeah, and we're trying to play extra ramp, extra lands into play. I have always had a lot of lands in this deck. But even if you're not playing um, a ramp packagey kind of deck, if even if it is something like Trin and Silvar, having Black Blade Reforge is still good because even if you only have the five mana that you need for Silvar, there's still an extra five five. You know? So true. So. Oh, he still hits like a truck with it. Yeah. Any commander does. Like yeah. it's a I'm solid. Just, just for reference, I'm you gonna know. have to definitely pick that up. I'm... You're finna have to. Yeah. Folio of Fancies is one of my favorite cards to run Love in CDH because it's not a card most CDH players care about in the slightest. They don't counter it. It's not on their radar. But the ability oh, to make each player <laughs> draw X cards, so XX tap each player draws X cards, is. It's just a really solid card. It gives everyone no max hand size. So if you mana sync, a lot of people, I'm just going to bluntly say it, a lot of people can't handle the choice of what to do with 20 cards in their hand. As soon as they have those things, they've been planning something out. They're they're go around now. They have 20 cards in their hand and they make mistakes. They don't know what to do with it because most people, especially at the CDH level, are really, really analytical and really threat focused and they're Sitting there, they shuffle through their cards because they know what they want to do. They've already planned it out. You wreck their plans with this. It is very, very rough. And then for three in a tap, you can, every time they try tutor and answer to the top of the deck, get rid of it. It is aggressively bad for people. You also killed us with force draw. Well, yeah, and you can kill people with force draw, which is good. Uh, this will kill people who are trying to Thassa's Oracle win because they exile their library. Thassa's Oracle on the stack and you pay two mana and make them draw a card. So so awesome! I love this card. Yeah, it's, uh, so it'll wreck a it'll wreck a folio fancy. Uh, so it'll wreck a Thassa's Oracle. It'll wreck a lab man. It'll, yep. like it. I yeah, love the exactly. fact that I have a book in it. And I can put it in my book trial. Yeah, exactly. so. But it's uh, <laughs> it, it's other ability is pretty rough, and it's each opponent puts a number of equal to the cards, number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand into their graveyard. They mill whatever's in their hand to grave. Yeah, so you got twenty. They're gonna mill twenty. Yeah, which is a pretty easy way to start getting rid of people's stuff. And again, most people don't just consider it a threat. They don't see it as powerful, but uh, a three mana everyone mills seven is pretty... It, you're three mana milling 21 cards at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty pretty aggressive. And like and like you said, like you're milling their yep. combo piece. We have the Orrery, which is one of my favorite cards in Magic. Each player uh, can play an Jiripur additional land. Orrery. The Jiripur Orrery, yes, yeah, sorry. There, well, there's more than one. Um, <laughs> yeah, each there's, player may play yeah. an additional land on each of their turns. Yeah. It's some group hug. So we're bringing some group hug yeah. to CEDH. Each player. But again, you're trying to take their lands from them anyways. Yeah, so who cares? Uh, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if they have no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. You're going to be able to outplay your hand a lot. Uh-huh. So this draw is going to be pretty good. And it doesn't matter if you outplay your hand because you have a stack of 50 cards with Paco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, so you having no hand doesn't matter. We have Gruel Locket because, again, more ramp. You need it. Uh, Isochron Scepter, which hits so many cards in our deck. So many cards, so annoying. Put seed time under it. It'll be fun. <laughs> oh. Take extra turns every time someone tries yeah. to counter anything you do and watch how fast they stop. <laughs> uh, we run the Ketria Crystal because, again, great card. It has cycling and it also has the ability to give you any mana color you need in the deck. Again, absolutely gorgeous card. Mm, Lantern yeah. of, All Lantern of, the of Insight beautiful. is an awesome card in this deck. Each player plays the top card of their library revealed, which is wonderful. You know what you're going to hit. Uh, and then you can sack it to make target players shuffle their library. Fair. Put the wing con on top. I don't like that there. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Lightning Greaves because you've got to protect Paco. Yeah. 
You put some shoes on your dog. Yeah, sometimes you put some shoes on your dog. <laughs> uh, Mana Crypt, because Mana Crypt is just a solid card. It really, the Ouch Rock ramps up how fast you can get things out. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have it, you don't need it, but it's going to lead to your turn to yeah. Paco for sure. Play somebody else's, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mirage Mirror, just in general, is a good card. Uh, there's a lot of enchantments. We're going to get to those shortly that are very, very worth copying in this deck. Hmm. And uh, also, it, it's the same thing. There's so many cards that are really, really good in this deck that really, really function with this. Like, there's uh, I, I run Tabernacle in my deck, for instance, and stuff. So if somebody tries to destroy it, then I can just make another Tabernacle. No wonder you have, like, yeah, this deck cost $4,000. Uh, Mox Amber, because if you control your commander, you can tap for any of its colors, which is wicked. Primal Amulet, OP. Yeah, Primal Amulet makes your instant sorceries cost one less. Great card. And then eventually flips so that you can, every time you use mana of any color, it copies the spell. Yeah, so I have to have four counters, on, four or more counters on it. And you get, get the charge counters by, by casting, casting instant and yeah. sorceries. Soul Ring, obviously, because Soul Ring. Talisman of Creativity. I love the talismans in general. They tap or they pain ping you for the colors you need. Yep. But overall, two two to get one mana, not hard. And again, we're, we're we need mana in this. We have a lot of cards. Temple Bell. So there, I, I I see that you're like you're using like one of the pain talismans. Yep. Why not the arcane signet? The arcane signet I just never put in this deck because I'm just so used to not building oh, okay. with it. Still, definitely something you could put into the deck. Mm-hmm and should put into the deck in general. Mm-hmm. I just am so used to running. Yeah, like, no, I, I was just amazed yeah. that you, you I, have I, something I, there that pings you. <laughs> like, yeah. There's one that costs the same. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so used to just in the CDH thing not caring about my life total. That's true. So when I built my deck, I built my deck from what was sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, you have the Ozolith, which is an awesome new artifact. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. People get rid of the stuff yeah, on, so... on Paco. Paco comes back. Oh my Paco's... god, it's a one drop? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I knew it was... I, I and never, Paco's suddenly I'm, 20, 20 I have never looked at its um, mana well, cost. You had an opportunity yesterday when you came by the store and I bought a pre-release box. Yeah. Well, I, you opened two I, of them. I own like four. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I gotta put that in a track stuff. And I never even looked at the mana cost because I just know I need it. But it's whenever a creature loses a battlefield, if it had counters on it, you put the counters on the Ozolith and then at the beginning of combat, you can move counters from the Ozolith onto creatures. Which is... Dope. That, so, yeah. I also run Jace because Jace just functions generally with this deck. You yeah. can look at the top card of their library. Nice decide affordable if you want planeswalkers. Uh, for zero, you can, yeah, Jace the Vine Sculptor, sorry. So two and a blue, blue. Uh, draw three cards, put two cards on top in any order. So it brainstorms. Mm-hmm. Minus one returns target creature to its owner's hand, which is exceptionally annoying to people who rely on it, like an Ajila, a Zer. Stuff like that. They, they need oh, those God. cards out. And then it's minus 12 if you were to ever get to it, but I I can't see how you would. Yeah. Uh, you can just exile people's library, which is really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's annoying. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely pretty bad. And then now we'll go into the enchantments. So The fun ones. How many enchantments do we have? Oh, 11. Uh, just 11. So again, we have a lot of mana in the deck, and one of the things to do with that mana is to just dump it into Aggravated Assault. Three red red untap all creatures you control after this main phase. There's an additional combat followed by an additional main phase. Activated only any time you could cast a sorcery. So oh, Paco's going to get big! Yeah, so that's with, horrifying. So with so much mana, exactly. You're, you, I, I've been able to reliably, in this deck, swing four or five times with Paco. The best is with the next card, though. Yes, the next card is Bear Umbra. Uh, Enchanted Creature gets 2-2, two, two, and whenever it attacks, untap all lands you control. Yeah, for a 2 green green. Enchan- and then it gives aura. Totem Armor if you could destroy Paco. You say, let's no! Go, let's go infinite yeah. with the Aggravated Assault. Yeah. So, so nice. So, again, we want to be able to untap our lands, and we want things that give us extra mana. Oh, yeah. Druids that's, that's, pa- sorry, I was going to say, that's the secondary win con. Yep. Just yeah. kill people with Yeah, Paco. secondary win con is just bite people with Paco. Yeah. So. Like, go, go fetch. Go fetch his life. Go the, fetch his life. Boy. <laughs> the budget version of this deck uh, runs Trailblazer's Boots, and I guarantee in pretty much every CDH game, you're going to be able to Trailblazer's Boots kill people with Paco, because... Who everyone, doesn't have non-basic everyone lands? Everyone runs non-basic lands, except like maybe Urza decks. Yeah. Vandal Blast them right in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Um, Druid's Repository. 
one green green. Whenever a creature you control attacks, put a charge counter on it, and then remove a charge counter at any time. Add a mana of any color to your pool. Oh. That's nice. Astrid's Invocation. Again, we're able to copy our enchantments. We have enchantments that matter. Uh-huh. Right? Like Bear Emblem. Uh, Exploration. You can play an additional land on your turns. Play their lands. Great value. Nature's Will. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, tap all lands they control, untap all lands you control. <laughs> so again, the same thing. You're just going to truck hit people with Paco. Paco is the second win condition. Yeah. Right to Flourishing, an extra land drop, and an extra you know what draw. That is? That's order. group hug. This yeah. is a group hug deck. Stranglehold is group hate. Your opponents, <laughs> your opponents can't search libraries. If the, an opponent would begin an extra turn, they skip it instead. It's I three sure it would be crazy if you couldn't tutor for your win con. Yeah, I was looking at that. Wild Growth is an amazing card to draw in the opening hand, and I never would have considered putting this in. This was actually recommended by the CDH TV guy, um, and it's Enchant Land. Whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional forest. It just is solid overall, because you, you're not running your mana dork ramp in this, right? Yeah. I, uh, I really like it. Wilderness Reclamation. You can give your end step, untap all lands you control. Solid card. Yeah, so again, you're, you're just trying so many times to actually play other people's cards that you need you need so much mana. You want all your instants available. You want to play all their instants if you can. Or you need five mana to be able to do multiple combats every single turn. Yeah, just to hit people with like, so, yeah, a like- truck. I want to be able to hit someone three times. That's 15 mana if you cannot untap it. Yep. Well, and then it's at the end step, though, being able to untap it is real bad. Mm-hmm. So then uh, in this deck, I actually run more lands than you would run in a typical CDH deck because I exile my lands a lot. <laughs> I exile them a lot. I draw them a lot. Like there's. You're going to have card advantage on everyone because for every swing with Paco you're going to basically be getting four cards. And especially in CDH, most of those four cards are going to be playable. It's going to be the equivalent of a four-card draw most True. of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, especially because you're not limited by color. Right? That's so nasty. Yeah, four colors. Nasty. Yeah. Nasty. So we, we do run 33 lands. Uh, they're pretty generic. We run Breeding Pool, 11 Forests, because we have so much green in the deck that just matters. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, six Islands, Ketra Triome, Six Mountains, Scalding Tarm, Steam Vents, Stomping Grounds, Tega, we run Tabernacle because we're monsters. <laughs> Tabernacle of Pendle Veil, for anyone who doesn't know, is all creatures now require an upkeep cost of one, or you sack them. So good. And, uh, so yeah. annoying. And, it, like, look at the price. Okay, it, That's It's like, annoying for a reason. Yeah. It's a legendary land, which is, which is kind of good that you can't have more, but it's... Also EDH, so you can't have more than one in US. So. $1,800 US. Tropical Island, Volcanic Island, and Wooded Foothills. It's a nice Wooded Foothills. Yeah. That's that's real land. nice that's Wooded land Foothills. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the the difference, we're going to quickly go and talk about the... We're going to talk about the budget version quickly and how it is. Um, I think everyone understands why you have the ability to get into cdh with a deck like this though because again like your the deck list is pretty similar minus the very very expensive cards obviously the budget version isn't running mana crypt obviously the budget version isn't going to be running a volcanic island or a tabernacle yeah (laughs) yeah because that's totally budget right but you're still going to have this aggressive ramp package you're still aggravated assaults not super expensive 16 17 dollar card yeah yeah and again most CDH decks don't have a response for like a 2020 dog attacking them 20 times. So, <laughs> right? And the better, like I said, the better the play group you're playing into, taking this budget version of the deck into a CDH table is still going to be fun. You're not going to be blown out of the water with it. No. And I've played the budget version of this deck. It was very, very fun. I was not happy. Yeah, I played like I, the budget version still really, really bonks people. Like, yeah, and like the the price difference for the budget compared to the other one is enormous. Okay, because like your regular one, your regular CDH is for like close to forty four hundred dollars. Yep. Okay, budget, budget, everyone is two hundred and fifteen dollars. That's a huge difference. I was saying Even if you earlier, take out like the tabernacle, it's still a huge difference. Yep. I was saying earlier, like that's a good price for any EDH yeah. deck. This, this deck's still going to be really fun to play against just your friends. It doesn't have to be 
quote unquote CEDH, yeah. even though you have your instant speed win still. This the the budget version still runs your ability to get the leveler and oracle out. I, I think with these commanders, regardless of whatever you put in the deck, you're going to have fun. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Well, and that's the this is fun. This is a way to play with your competitive friends, but even if you're not competitive friends, like you're gonna hit their creatures. It's not gonna be as good. But you're still going to hit your friend's spells. You're still going to be able to yeah. play other people's decks. Well, and playing cards from other people's decks is always a good time. Like, I I think at least, I think that's why one Villainous of my... Villainous Wealth's a great I was going to say, that's why one of my favorite cards is Villainous Wealth, you know? It's just... Torment of Hellfire. There. <laughs> and, and you're going to be getting pleasure out of salting your friends by playing their cards. But it's yes. one of those things that's like, <laughs> it salts, but it's not like... I'm annoyed and now I'm going to play like a nine against you kind of salt. Well, it's like I wish that I could have played that, but there's everybody's laughing kind of. Yeah. You know? If a I lot had of, a nine, I'd play it. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot I would of people, never. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about CDH though, right? And yeah. This is kind of a deck to show that it's not the big bad boogeyman. You're, you're swinging at people with a big stupid looking dog yelling Paco fetch. You're having, <laughs> you're having a good time. Yeah. You're still ramping out like a normal green deck would. Yep. And yeah, like again, you're you're just playing a like, different kind this, of deck. To me, for... th- this feels like very approachable. Well, and what I was gonna say is, for people like Hope, whose only game plan is big creature battle cruiser me magic swing, match. yeah, this this is an interesting way to do it because you're gonna get to see different people's things. You're not running the most annoying counter spells in the world. You're not trying to lock people out of the game. Everyone's still playing. You do have some group hug in it. Yep. So it's not, yeah, group hugs and finger quotes, but it's still group hug nonetheless. <laughs> but, but again, you're going you're gonna to definitely learn how to play with an advantage in this deck. You're going to really be able to control what other people are doing. You're going to have a lot of top deck manipulation against other people. You could run things like senseis, but I'll let Sherman go through some of the quick differences like the sorceries. Okay. Uh, okay. But before you do that, I just want to mention like something like this. Um, the reason I say that it's so approachable is because it gives you the familiarity, the familiarity of uh, green ramp, um, the familiarity of the angry red smash, and also the kind of like comp- more complicated and um, spelly s- spell slingy kind of aspect of blue. And I think that, like, all of those combined together, I think Teamer is a very, like, a very interesting combination to be your introduction to CEDH because it doesn't, it's not, like, so aggressive, like, blue, like, mono blue or mono black or anything in that kind of realm for CEDH. Well, you're also very similar to Trin and Silvar in how much your commanders matter in this and stuff, right? They're, you're both swinging with big things. You can build similar. You can build Paco very, very differently than this. You could build a very, very fun Halden Paco uh, deck where you really Voltron him out and stuff. Switch the the counter and control over to artifacts and enchantments that buff him. Yeah, and you still have a great time. Like this. Uh, and and I think like the the transition from a casual to a, a competitive deck with these commanders is very natural and it's very like, um, it's very like it intro flows. Level. Yeah, it flows. Yeah. So my thing is, I'm starting CDH, and I chose yes, a you mono, are a mono black deck. Yeah, nothing but, wrong with that. No, no, no. no but, but playing it, I'm not used to yeah. the interactions and what I need to do. But if I was to pick this up, yes, this budget version I of this am deck, a green player at heart. Mm-hmm. I understand oh. what green does. You and, understand oh. ramp, yeah, and it ramps. And, oh. ramps. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I understand red bolts. Yeah, yep. damage. Extra combat, exactly. And then, and then, just blue for yeah, the counters. control, the counter, yeah. the draw, exactly. Because you can you can slot in a lot of this this uh, budget version is really just a shell, and you should take it in whatever direction you prefer. If you want to draw more cards, if you want to control the table more, uh, slot whatever, in more blue. Yeah, whatever way you want to go and stuff, you can make this. This is just a a very very basic introduction to. Competitive. You can play competitively against your friends who are going to be playing these. Like like this this budget version of the deck will go toe to toe with some of my five thousand dollar decks. Oh which yeah, is really really awesome. It, yeah. it just goes to show people that like even if you go competitive, you don't have to spend money. You just have to think about what you want to do and execute it better than everyone else. Yes, this is who knows how well the episode will age, but as of right now in twenty twenty, when we're recording this episode. 
the the commanders of the day are going to be beat. The the CDH commanders of the day are going to be beat by this. This is going to beat a lot of the Thrasios Timna decks. It has answers galore to the typical. Uh, I want to. It'll beat Urza. Thra- I want a Thassa's Oracle. It's got a lot of ways to shut Urza down because you're taking those artifacts away from them. It's yeah. You're either physically taking them by fetching them, mm-hmm. or you're getting rid of them with Bandle Blast. Yeah, something and, like and that, the, you know? the things like, uh, like a, a Zer deck doesn't run enough creatures to be able to not have Paco blow through them. Yeah. And and that's just it and stuff. Especially he, if you give them Trample. Yep, yeah, that's, and that's exactly it. But like the, the budget version, like I said, it does include Trailblazer's Boots. Yeah. And that is a walk over your opponent's card. Yeah. Literally. Oh, if anyone doesn't know what Trailblazer's Boots is, because we mentioned it a couple times, it's it gives you the equipped creature non basic land walk. Yep. But this is what I mean. This is uh, if CDH, like I said, is it's kind of the talk of the town at the moment. Everyone's talking a little more about it, and it definitely is a little more exciting. It's just magic in a different way. Totally. Right. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not better. It's not worse. There's there's a time and a place for all kinds of magic. But if your friends are getting into the more combo themed decks the more uh the more fast explosive plays and stuff and you're needing you something like to keep up with it stand with the big boys yeah don't feel like you need to go sink fifteen hundred dollars into a deck like maybe give this a shot run run this and see how well their combo based decks are gonna perform now that you're playing your dog and again like i said it, it, it does take the edge off the table because most people bring the competitive decks out when they're a little tilted or whatever yeah you can't be mad at someone who's saying Paco Fetch while they're swinging a 1919 at you. But I can if you take my Cyclonic Rift and use it against me. I would never. I would just leave it in exhale. I think that would be worse. <laughs> I think that would be worse. All right, so let's go through it real fast here. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, sorceries, there's no change. Well, you've taken some out, but everything there we same. already talked about before. Yeah, so, I'm saying I'm, basic pack. Yeah, going to go straight to the instance instead. First one that we haven't talked that one of the changes is Beast Within. Yep. Okay. A little more removal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two in green, destroy target permanent, is control or creates a three three beast. You get a three three beast. You're yeah. welcome. Uh you have brainstorm, so single blue. Draw uh, draw three cards, then put two cards back uh from your hand back on top of the library in any order. Which is nice for the fetch, but also because you don't have the Jace. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, well that's it. That's... He, it's supposed to replace the Jace. Yeah. Now Next one, I'm surprised you put cancel in because there's better cards, but yeah. But whatever. but again, we're just trying to run just a quick budget one. That's true. Cancel one blue. And blue. who who doesn't know where a cancel is? Yeah, that's true. You just like ask someone, and everyone's like, "I have 40 copies. Pick yeah. one." So uh, one blue blue counter target spell. Cool. Uh, okay, let's swap. Counter flux. Counter flux is the fun card. I yep. love this card. Okay, blue blue red. A little annoying to cast. All right. Counter flux can't be countered by spells or abilities, which is dope. And you counter target spell you don't control, which is going to happen quite often. And you have an overload. One blue, blue, red. So yeah, add one colorless. Yeah. So you overload. And it's like, it's weird because you can overload on countering a spell. So does it counter everything on the All stack? All spells you don't control. Yeah. Like, so if a bunch of, there's a bunch of spells Yeah, exactly. Stack, if it's it a huge everything? stack, yeah. counter spell everything oh on the stack. That so you if everyone's, so if someone's trying to storm off or whatever... Yeah. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Like your brother does. Yep. <laughs> like every single time. <laughs> uh, let's see. We did that one. Did that one. We did that one. Uh, we did, a, uh, um, did that one. Crossing grips. No, uh, no crossing grips. Both. I forgot. Uh, last word. Uh, last, last word. word yes. Is, yep. So last word. Two blue, blue. Okay. Uh, can't be countered by target spells or abilities, and you counter target spell. Let's so the, this the budget version has a lot more strict control. Overwhelming denial again. It can't be countered by spells or abilities, counter target spell, and you can pay it for two if you were a teammate have cast a spell this turn. Yeah. Uh, reverberate. Red, red. Instant. Copy target. Instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. I always love stuff like this. Mm-hmm. This, fork, you name it. I love it. Yep. So, uh, oh, uh, we ever talk about static feeding. Yep. Seed time. Shredder sales. Uh, I think. Uh, whirlwind denial is another one that's added into this one. Yeah. Yes. For each it's spell and ability your opponent's control, counter it unless its controller pays for. This card I love. I love this card so much. Okay, and it's an uncommon from Theros. Uh, beyond that, it's twenty five cents still, but the ability, like the ability to counter every single spell on a stack, pretty much is so so powerful. So let me let me tell a quick story about it because it's 
one of the funniest <laughs> things that made the owner of our game store Adrian. actually burst out laughing because I cast Warp World with 97 zombie tokens out in my Wind Grace deck. Mm-hmm. So I got to put my deck into play. Yeah. I had well over 1,300 triggers on the stack mm-hmm. with Landfall. I had Pandemonium. Whenever a creature enters, come in, uh, it deals damage. Uh, I had a Vesuva, Thespian Stage, and Field of the Dead hit along with 36 other lands. Yeah, I hear crushing it. Yeah, I had a lot going on. Warstorm Surge, uh, Goblin Bombardment, Perforos. We had just, we had monster triggers on the stack. Yeah. And my brother hits Whirlwind of Denial. And deny. So all of my landfall triggers, all of my, uh, I had the Black Obnixilis with landfall. Uh, I, I had so many triggers. I was killing the table with it, and I was suddenly just shut down to having all of the abilities countered unless I gained four. So all of my Lotus Cobra, oh, uh, Panharmonicon had hit the table. It was, it was just, a, I was excited. It was the only time Warp World had ever gone so well this? for me. Huh, Connor? That's cool. Yeah, and then I, like I told him, I, I was talking very, very large amounts of trash as I'm off often doing. Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, "Oh, do you have a stifle? Is that what you're gonna do?" He's like, "Kind of." And I was like, "All right, well, try a stifle." He's like, "Put your put your stacks on uh, triggers on the stack, and I'll go to mine. Put all my triggers on the stack." I was just like, "I'll." So he's just baiting you. Yeah, I put I put it on. I was like, "I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you." And he's like, and then uh, it went hold. over and resolved. And so none of my landfall triggers had resolved. All my lands enter, and I thirty six lands definitely doesn't pay for that many. Sure doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not very many blue counter spells in Wind Grace. <laughs> so, uh, Whirlwind Denial definitely is not a card to be slept on. It is, it is aggressively good in its ability to get rid of the stack. And like Sherman said, someone's storming off, and I'm gonna put twenty triggers on the stack, or somebody, I'm gonna generate infinite mana, and I'll Urza. Okay, well, I'll counter all those. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you play four. This is fantastic. Yeah, so again, we, we just wanted to do a quick talk about Halden Paco. We wanted to just show a little bit of an intro to CDH. Um, the budget version obviously isn't the strongest deck. But it's, it's still But it's, it's going to hold her own. But I'm going to be honest. If you build Halden and Paco, you're going to have fun. And you're going to have fun with decks that you might not have had fun with in the past. People playing their stacks decks, people playing their combo off Now decks. you will play stacks. Yeah, exactly. It, it's very, very or fun to be able... Or you'll just stop people from playing stacks. Yep. Because you'll just leave it in next. You have a lot of control in this deck. You have a lot of fun in this deck. And you are going to... It's just really fun to play. You you still have your, like, I guess not 99. You have 98 cards in this deck. But you have everyone else's deck to play with as well. You have the ability to go... And do it, and like I said, you you can win out of nowhere with these cards. Yeah. Defense of the heart into Thassa's Oracle Leveler is just going to make the table just dumbfounded. Yeah. <laughs> when, when they have like three one one soldiers out on turn four or five, and you win the game. Yeah. Oh, just that's like brutal. that. But so. yeah, let us know. Um, do you play CEDH? Uh, like, what are your thoughts on it, and how did you get into it? Was it an expensive adventure? And if you were thinking about it, also like is yeah, this is this a- something that would make you try CDH? Exactly. I like to see. I like to see the stuff like this, just because like a lot of people are like, "Oh, my deck level is like this power level," and you make suggestions. You're like, "Oh, I don't want to make this into a CEDH." You know, it comes down to how you play it, how you build it, and mm-hmm. everything. Because nope. this could play at a casual table, or it could play at a CDH. Yeah. Because yeah. like he, like Daniel and I, we sandbag quite a bit when we play against other people, just to have. Yeah, fun. I play silly things. Yeah, Same. I definitely play silly things because I'm the budget guy. Well, that's that's hope with Iona. Every time Iona was legal to play, hope just wouldn't play I it. Never played it. Yeah, unless I was real mad. She's not a monster. Or if I was, or if I was like down to one ta- one person at the table and I, and I wanted to win. Yep. Yeah. So. But, but yeah, it's anyways. Uh, like I said, this is just my take on getting into CEDH. Yeah. Uh, it's a very very with partners you're able to do these weird. Divergent transformation style cards, mm-hmm. and again, people aren't going to see it coming out of like no one expects the uh, defense of the heart to that. That card should just be played so much. <laughs> I know it's so good. It is severely underplayed. Like how, I, how much is again? Defense the heart, not like, crazy. Ten fifty yeah. US, yeah. super old. It's rare. So yeah, it was just reprinted in the mystery boosters. 
Oh, great. Wow. So it's like kind and of And it has accessible. a very, very cool foil version that's all up in my Muldrotha. Oh, hell all yeah. All up in Muldrotha. Anyways, so to that end, like I said, like we I'll said, guys, it. let us know uh, how you feel about this deck. Is it something that you might want to build now if you had gotten the commander decks and maybe not even thought about uh, letting these two shine on their own? Um, as well, let us know on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or come chit chat in our Discord. We also stream every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time and check out our website for um, you can check out the podcast there as well as blog posts from ourselves and our many content creator um, pals. Yeah, uh, one of our newest partners, uh, Casual Jake, put up a great article this week uh, about what it's like to lose a game. Mm -hmm. And it is a really, really good article. It's a very, it's very a good, good read. read so it's definitely good check it out. Yeah. Um, and also don't forget that with our streams, uh, send us a message on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Brian books all of our games and come play with us. Come talk with us and you can see what these decks that we talk about are actually like. You can show us your decks and have a, have a good talk with a bunch of the hosts. Hit a new meta. Anyways, so yeah, we'll see you guys next Sunday. All right, catch you later. See ya. Bye-bye.